Hello. Join me as we study the Gospel of Matthew. Just gotta find the Gospel of Matthew. My bookmarks are all tangled. There we go. Aha. <clears throat> uh -huh. So we are now in chapter 16 of Matthew. And it says, Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather, for the, uh, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. One second. Okay. So, they wanted a sign. Quite often, skeptics, people without faith, they want a sign. They want something to prove, something to show. And more often than not, that's just an excuse. It's not that they really want a sign. In fact, more than likely, they're just doubting that a sign is possible. Therefore, they ask for a sign, kind of just hoping it lets them keep believing what they believe. You know, people want to throw out all these questions, and the, the idea is, is that they don't want an answer, <laughs> in short. And I would dare to say that these Pharisees didn't really want a sign. I, I think the Pharisees just wanted Jesus to be wrong. And you'll note that Jesus doesn't give them a sign. And as you all know, right, it has nothing to do with Jesus's ability to give them a sign, right? So for those just tuning in, right, we're in Matthew 16. We read one through four, how the Pharisees are asking for a sign. He says, no, no sign will be given except for the sign of the prophet Jonah i.e. the resurrection, should be enough, right? And the sign of preaching. Now, that's actually interesting is that the sign of the prophet Jonah, when I taught Jonah, something that we looked at is there's actually two things you could look at as the sign of Jonah. It's actually not totally clear because Jesus never exactly says. It mentions the three days and night he's in the belly of the whale. So too the son of man. But it's interesting, the sign of the prophet Jonah Jesus was like Jonah in the resurrection. And I'm kind of going back and almost correcting myself here. But really, what was Jonah's sign to Nineveh? The whale thing could have been a sign. I mean, people talk about if you're in, this, in a whale, if you're actually in the stomach, stomach, you know, the digestive juices would bleach your skin. But if he was in the sinus cavity, that's what we did that on Jonah. We can talk about that another day. But what was Jonah's sign to Nineveh? He preached. That was the sign. He came to Nineveh and he preached. And it was a pretty straightforward message. You're all going to die. And they repented. Jesus mentioned earlier, right? To know, to know Jonah's message, Nineveh repented. And the Queen of Sheba came at Solomon's. And what was Solomon's? It was Solomon's wisdom and teaching. Solomon's teaching, Jonah's preaching was enough to get these non-Israelites, pagans from foreign nations, to repent and come to the living God. These guys want a sign, and Jesus says, you know what? Your sign is preaching. I'm going to tell you what's up. And if your heart is willing, you will receive this sign. And if your heart is unwilling, then no sign will satisfy. I don't know how many people, you know, talk about, well, I believe the Bible if. And then they throw out some silly thing. And the irony is, like, you know, that's something I specialize in. It's something I personally put a lot of time into is being able to answer those kinds of questions. And I'll give them answers. Logical, consistent, 
biblical, scientific, historical. And they, well, they, they turn it down. It's a reminder that it's the heart of the people that will determine whether or not they receive the message. And you could do a horrible job of delivering a message. But if their hearts are willing, it'll be received. And you could deliver the most powerful and impactful message ever. But if their hearts are unwilling, they just won't receive it. Now, what is something that we can take away from this is this. There are people with willing hearts. Jesus said that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray that God would send workers. You guys all have the ability to share the message because you don't need to be that good at it, really. Really, it doesn't really depend on you. Uh, your obedience to doing the work of an evangelist, your obedience to going into all nations and sharing the, you know, sharing the gospel, I mean, that's the idea. Your obedience is to do it. As far as the effectiveness of your obedience, that's in God's hands, and it's the heart of the hearer. So why don't you try just fumbling through sharing the gospel with people? If their hearts are willing, it'll be received whether you barely can make out sentences or not. In fact, some of the best evangelists that the church has ever had have not necessarily been the greats, Whitfield, you know, and, and Edwards and, and Wesley and all these great preachers. No, it's... It's been new believers. See, oftentimes recent converts are excited about Jesus. Are you still excited about Jesus? How excited? Are you so excited that you can't hardly shut your mouth? We've got a couple of those at our church. New believers, new converts. And they don't shut up about Jesus. And every week, I'm hearing about the people they've invited to church and the people they're talking to Jesus about. And you know what? They hardly know their right hand from their left when it comes to the Bible. But they're making a difference. And people are being drawn in because they're just out there sharing the message. And as they cast their net again and again, they catch some fish here and there. Why? Because they're casting their nets. So, these guys wanted a sign because they had hard hearts. And Jesus didn't give them a sign. He didn't appease them because he knew that they had hard hearts. You are going to run into people with hard hearts, but there are other people out there with softened hearts who are waiting for someone to bring them the message. And heaven forbid the Mormons beat you to them because there's some people who are desperate for God and they're going to grasp at the first message that gets brought to them that has some sort of, a, of an appearance of truth to it. So let's pray that we get Christians sharing the actual gospel and just the goodness of God and the awesomeness of Jesus Christ. Be obedient, dear friends. Share the gospel using your mouth in person with other human beings. That's what we're called to do. All right. God bless you guys. I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Maybe 7.30, maybe a little late. I do post it on my profile when I'm running late right today. Because today was a good morning of getting some studying and some other stuff done. It was I was on a roll and didn't want to lose steam. So you guys take care. And I will see you guys tomorrow.